Turning now to some business news and while farmers across India are staging a nationwide strike over changes to how the government regulates the market for their produce. It comes after nearly two weeks of protests on the outskirts of the capital, New Delhi. For more, let's speak to our business editor, Stephen Carroll. Uh, Stephen, what exactly is this strike about? It's over a series of agricultural reforms that was passed by the Indian Parliament uh, in September of this year. And what they do is they essentially change the way uh, that agricultural produce is sold, priced and stored. It opens up uh, greater avenues for private buyers in what has been a very heavily regulated market by the government and in particular uh, it makes changes to the system whereas most farmers sell to government run wholesale markets that offer them guaranteed prices these reforms will allow more farmers to sell to directly to private buyers which has led many farmers to fear that there could be an end uh, in sight for those government run markets the so-called mandi system uh, for agricultural trading in india so that that's led to the start uh, of these protests. Uh, farmers say they're worried about the lack of a, a fear of, of it driving down prices, whereas the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that these reforms will liberate farmers. There are also changes in store to the Indian government's uh, procurement of food for food aid. Uh, and that, again, is something that farmers are worried about changes to. This uh, reforms affect, of course, millions of people in India, a country where it's estimated 60% of people rely on agriculture uh, for their living. Now, the protests began as farmers, particularly from the Punjab and Haryana regions, came to, or states I should say, uh, came to the outskirts of the capital, New Delhi, and they've blockaded parts of motorway access on the outskirts of the city as well. Those protests beginning 12 days ago, but culminating in this nationwide strike today by farmers, which has led to more disruption to travel. There have been several rounds of negotiations with governments uh, over between farmers and the government over these reforms. The farmers say they only want a complete repeal uh, and that nothing less will do. More talks are planned on this issue later in the week, though. Turning to another business story, Stephen, and Uber has abandoned plans to develop uh, a self-driving car. What's happened? It's one of the most ambitious programs there was out there for the development of self-driving taxis, but Uber has sold uh, its self-driving car unit to the startup Aurora, which is backed by Amazon, Amazon among others. It'll involve 1,200 Uber staff being transferred to Aurora and Uber taking a 40% stake uh, in that company, but selling it out from its own part of the business. Now, Uber has invested massively in this in recent years, but the program hit uh, a fairly major crisis in 2018 when an accident involving one of its self-driving cars in Arizona killed a woman. Uh, and that incident really put a dampener on the plans by the company. And certainly investors had been pushing management at Uber to shift their investment away from projects like self-driving cars and more into making sure that its primary ride-hailing business was more profitable. Uh, so a big change for Uber's investment. They had lost around $300 million a year investing in technologies like self-driving cars. Uh, plenty more, though, difficulties facing Uber as well financially. There's been a massive drop in bookings in recent months uh, for the company too. Uh, so that's leading them to make this decision. OK. Um, finally, Stephen, take us through how the markets are faring. The big story today in the Chinese markets is the stock market launch of JD Health, which is a Chinese online health marketplace linked uh, to the online retailer JD.com. Its shares up around 60% on its first day's trading in Hong Kong. This is, of course, has been a massively increased demand for online health services uh, linked to the pandemic. So that's the big story dominating Chinese markets today. Generally in Asia, though, uh, shares trading down across most major markets falls on the Nikkei in Tokyo, despite the news the government there uh, announced a new stimulus plan for the economy worth around 580 billion euros. On the European markets, uh, shares starting in the red today in trading. Today, of course, more worries about the coronavirus, but also the Brexit talks weighing on investors' minds there as well. London, Paris and Frankfurt all in the red. On the currency markets, the pound uh, trading weaker against both the dollar and the euro. Of course, we do tend to see Brexit drama play out on the currency markets and the pound trading down, uh, reflecting the difference 
difficulty that there seems to be in those talks of getting a post-Brexit trade deal done between the UK and the European Union. Stephen Carroll, our business editor, thanks indeed for that update.